May God be with you. Welcome to Ash Wednesday service here at Mount Olivet Lutheran Church of Plymouth. Um, the weather always is catching us when uh, we expect it or not. And so wherever you are tonight in your homes, gathered together to worship, uh, we join you there as we mark the beginning of the season of Lent. I know many of us have traditions or um, memories about Lent growing up, and we just bring our full selves to this season. Um, But here is the gist, that God calls us again to remind us that we don't live this life alone. In life and in death, God is with us. And so um, our hope in prayer tonight, in the quiet and contemplation, is somehow you are swept up again in that promise um, that God is calling us to see this world and our call in it again and again. So everything that you will need for this service will be on the screen. Unfortunately, because we're not all together, uh, you will not be here to receive the imposition of ashes. But please know that we will um, be doing the imposition of ashes at both the 9 o'clock and the 1045 services on Sunday. So we look forward to that time together with you then. So as we begin, uh, we hear this blessing for the dust of Ash Wednesday. All those days you felt like dust, like dirt, as if all you had to do was turn your face toward the wind and be scattered to the four corners or swept away by the smallest breath as insubstantial. Did you not know what the Holy One can do with dust? This is the day we freely say we are scorched. This is the hour we are marked by what has made it through the burning. This is the moment we ask for the blessing that lives within the ancient ashes, that makes its home inside the soil of this sacred earth. So let us be marked not for sorrow. Let us be marked not for shame. Let us be marked not for false humility, or for thinking we are less than we are, but for claiming what God can do within the dust, within the dirt, within the stuff of which the world is made, and the stars that blaze in our bones, and the galaxies that spiral inside the smudge we bear. Amen. We now sing together.
we pray together, holy and immortal God, you are filled with tender compassion, and you remember how we are made, as frail as dust and as fleeting as breath. As we enter the season of Lent, turn our hearts in trust toward you and in love toward one another, for you are gracious and merciful slow to anger, and rich in love. Through Jesus Christ, amen. of Matthew. Jesus said to the disciples, Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them, for then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father, who sees in secret, will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door. And pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who is in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret, and your Father who is in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourself treasure in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Okay, so a weird memory resurfaced for me this week when I became a teenager of about maybe 13 or 14. My mom finally gave me the okay to start wearing some makeup to school. I was thrilled because a lot of the popular girls were already wearing it. There was only one problem. I had no idea what would look good or how to put it on. 
So one Saturday afternoon, my girlfriend, who was talented at this sort of thing, gave me a legitimate makeover. I can still remember the lilac eyeshadow, the thick plum eyeliner, the volumizing mascara, and more. And I'm serious when I tell you that I still don't know how to apply makeup as expertly as she did. And then her words came, You look so much better. Did I? When I got home, I went straight up to the bathroom to see her handiwork and better lighting. And I decided that though I really liked makeup on other people, it just wasn't me. I remember how liberating it felt to take a washcloth and wash all that makeup off my face. Looking back, I'm thankful that even as an awkward teenage girl, I still had a still small voice telling me what it was like to be myself. Today is Ash Wednesday, marking the beginning of Lent, and we are here in the midst of a maybe will it happen, yes, it is definitely happening, dump of snow from the heavens, because because we all need a reminder that our true selves are connected to the dust of the earth, to the breath of God, and to one another. Theologian Frederick Buechner writes, During Lent, Christians are supposed to ask one way or another what it means to be themselves. I'm going to repeat that. During Lent, Christians are asked are supposed to ask one way or another what it means to be themselves. Isn't that a stunning statement? I can assure you that for most of my years, I was under the impression that the way of the season of Lent was to become less like myself, less of what I enjoyed, less of what I depended on, less of me, more of God seemed to be the math. But then I got to thinking, what if that math is terribly wrong? What if the math really is that more of my true self and more of your true self means more of God? In our text for today, Jesus isn't criticizing those who choose to give alms or those who pray to glorify God, or who fast in a certain way or another, he's calling the people out for motivations that are not true to who they are as the children of God. Their desires to be seen by others, heard by others, praised by others. Apparently, layers of junk... That's a technical term, by the way, are messing up the relationship between the people and God. We could be smug about their inauthentic purposes, but we all have layers of junk, don't we, that get between our true selves and God and our neighbor. And what do I mean by layers of junk? Well, junk is insecurity and doubt. Junk is pride and perfectionism. Junk is shame and self-loathing. Junk is self-absorption and self-destruction. Junk is fear and racism and violence. Junk is the longing for attention and desire to hide. Junk is over-functioning, and junk is under-functioning. Junk has so many names, too many to mention here. You know what your layers of junk are, and I certainly know what some of mine are. And so, Mount Olivet, we walk onward into Lent. There are so many faithful ways and practices to guide us during these gradually lengthening days. 
These 40 days of walking alongside Jesus to the cross, this period of time that is just long enough to interrupt us, to renew us, to call us back to God. And here's what I'm going to do this season. I'm going to pray about washing away one small layer of my own junk that no longer serves me or my relationships or God. And instead of thinking about this as becoming less of me, I am going to reframe it, and maybe this is helpful for you too, as becoming more of myself, more of the person I was created to be. This Ash Wednesday service helps me think about what that might be like. Is there any other day in the church year that is as honest and humbling as Ash Wednesday? Because when we confess our sins or our junk, and we come forward to hear the words, you are dust and to dust you shall return, all those layers wash away. If but for a moment we actually feel like specks in the universe, we are exposed and we are vulnerable standing before God with nothing to hide our faces behind, nothing to hang our hats on except the cross-shaped stardust from which we were created and which we will return and the promises of God. And in that moment, we ask, God, are you with me here, even in this place? And am I enough, even like this? And God answers, yes. Let's pray. God, uh, Emmanuel, you are here with us in our broken realities, with all our layers of junk present with us, even in this vast universe of yours. Thank you for dwelling with us in these next 40 days. Guide us ever toward you and our truest selves that you created us to be. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.
And we now confess together using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We now enter into an extended time for confession, covering both our transgressions and our omissions, and speaking the pain of the world and all its people. This confession tonight on Ash Wednesday is meant to linger through the weeks of Lent with the final absolution given on Monday, Thursday before Easter. So now let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Most holy and merciful God, we confess to you and to one another and before the whole company of heaven that we have sinned by our own by our own fault, by our own most grievous fault, in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Have mercy on us, O God. We have shut our ears to your call to serve as Christ served. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us, O God. Our past unfaithfulness, the pride, envy, hypocrisy, and apathy that have infected our lives, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Our self-indulgent appetites and ways and our exploitation of other people, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Our negligence in prayer and worship and our failure to share the faith that is in us, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Our neglect of human need and suffering, our indifference to just injustice and cruelty, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Our false judgments, our uncharitable thoughts toward our neighbors, and our prejudice and contempt toward those who differ from us, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Our waste and pollution of your creation and our lack of concern for those who come after us, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Restore us, O God, and let your anger depart from us. Hear Hear us, O God, God, for for your mercy mercy is great. You are now invited into a time of just quiet and contemplation wherever uh, this evening finds you tonight as um, Blake plays um, a piece on the organ. uh, May your space just be filled with reflection and maybe your time to consider um, what is it that you want uh, to wash away Um, to be more fully in yourself during the season of Lent. And again, we look forward to um, the imposition of ashes when we are together on Sunday.
We pray now together the prayer our Lord Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now receive this blessing. God, the giver of love, the Christ, the resurrection and the light and the Holy Spirit of the birth, call us again and again. In peace, serve, and love. Thanks be to God.